Dennis, welcome. Uh, he is an art historian, as you may know. He is a professor of art and philosophy. Dennis Zakharopoulos is re renowned, uh, world renowned for, for being an art historian and uh, a writer, a critic art artist, a critic writer who has collaborated with a number of prestigious international institutions. Um, and uh, he has exercised his curatorial vision in a variety of international recognized settings. Uh, Zakharopoulos, by the way, he studied music in Athens. Uh, and after that, he studied French literature, semantics, and philosophy, history, and sociology. Um, he has been teaching in Switzerland, in France, in the United States, in Great Britain, Austria, the Netherlands, and Greece. So you're really a man of the world, uh, a cosmopolitan by all means, uh, Dennis. Uh, we want to hear from you a word of wisdom, uh, your words of wisdom. <laughs> Please um, go ahead with uh, the, your parallels, your metaphors, your knowledge again, around the sense of art in this transforming society. Thank you, dear Donato. Thank you, all of you, for this extraordinary three days we are following uh, with great interest. Uh, <clears throat> nice coincidence, we are 3D today. Donato, Danilo and Dennis <laughs> speaking together. So. <laughs> uh, what that is the, uh, honor. What, Sorry. What an honor to be with you. Huh? The third D. The third D. I'm, I'm happy just to be the third D. <laughs> okay. So, uh, the subject, of course, of the panel is future education. And I must say, uh, we are speaking a lot of the present since we cannot. Preview, predict the future, but nevertheless, in order to think the future, I always remember very, perhaps banal for many people, sentence of a French mathematician and philosopher, who on the other side, he is also uh, reading in the film of Godard, some pages of Pascal on the infinite, Brice Parin who was saying that in order to, and this, to think the future, you have to have a sense of past, because the present, present is always gone, it's always, it's always past. So it's the only way to cut, to, to, to cut the time in order to jump in the future. Uh, <clears throat> in that sense, I would say, I wouldn't like to forget that within the nine muses, which are usually attributed to the arts, history is one of them, Cleo. Uh, therefore, since you spoke about my studies, I must say that perhaps the only way to understand the future of art or to relate to the future of art was also to go through, to reconsider the history of art. And therefore, instead of going to the close world of art historians, I had to follow what was going on. And I say that because education is the subject. Uh, all these new things like semantics, like uh, uh, new criticism, like l linguistics, like uh, all, all this uh, syncretism, uh, which changes constantly, uh, in order to understand, to try to understand why something that doesn't, that we don't understand, may be of some interest. In a certain way, we've gone through all these days very interesting things. And I believe that most of the people, and especially of the people strictly related to your organization and to the family of organizations you represent with the UN and UNESCO, said 
that uh, I, I, I think of two things, for instance, Gary Jacobs, who I see he is following, uh, said. Uh, the one is was about they have to teach us about the instruments we are using. I believe that's very important. I studied music to start with, and music is done with instruments. But if you use the instruments the way it's becoming banal, then you lose the music. You become a, it becomes a mechanical thing, and you have more and more people reproducing mechanical knowledge instead of understanding why people are inquiring and interrogating the what for, the why of the instruments. And by instruments, I mean as much a piano as a, as a minister uh, in a ministry of culture or of economy. There are instruments the society has created in order to progress, in order to uh, create, let's say, democracy. Democracy needs citizens. Uh, perfectly, Danilo uh, Santos de Miranda has proposed a great uh, uh, panorama of what a uh, nearly ideal way of approaching a multicultural society or, let's say, a society with accepting and integrating many cultures uh, can be a democratic society. But on the other side, I would like to add something that a citizen is only a part of a human being. Another part of a human being is not his or her citizenship, is the individuality. And this the individuality you cannot in include into any group, not even the family. If you are an individual, you, you are not the son of your father and your mother. You are yourself, I would say. Or somehow you have to go beyond your father and your mother. And uh, therefore, you, we dream we become brothers in the world because we are not brothers. We are not part of the world family as a utopia. We have to create this universal family. And this universal family, like any families, is full of passion, full of crimes, full of tragedies, full of... Uh, and the only way to consider and to conceive this impotence to cope with this negative aspect, the devil within us, is to is art, is the only thing we have, which is not even an instrument, which is a doubt, which is a practice of absurdity, which is a practice of uh, total uh, nonsense in order to jump into sense. To make sense, you have to go through nonsense. I always remember a great Danish uh, painter and sculptor and poet, etc., Pierre Kierkegaard, who died recently. Uh, we were in Spain after the fall of Franco in a museum, and we had a group of students coming and say, what for all these abstract paintings and this nonsense? We need art that illustrates social questions. And Pierre Kierkegaard be very quietly, he said, you know, in a democratic society, you have to accept all the rules. You live only within rules. You hear the music without disturbing your neighbors. You take your dog where it is allowed to take your dog. You sleep the hours, etc., etc. Art is the only thing. You can do whatever you want, the most absurd thing, without disturbing anybody and having no rules. So, if you want to enter a democratic society, accept that the only arbitrariness which is allowed by democracy 
is the arbitrariness of art. All other arbitrariness have to be controlled. Unfortunately, these days, since we are in the present and we cannot escape, we've made so many instruments that suddenly the market is not anymore the Greek agora, where people use to exchange, is not the Roman forum, it is the market. It is simply the market. So the market controls the arts as it controls the science, as it controls technology, as it controls everything. I was hearing the other day from a doctor that the most uh, uh, valuable uh, issue for sponsors in the United States in medicine is male calvisy. Uh, they want, they, they, it has much more success than all the real research in medicine. If you need money not to lose your hair, uh, you will find a sponsor immediately. Uh, this is a total nonsense of our society that is not at all artistic and is also not at all cultural, or it is a culture of today that is a very bad culture. It's a culture we have to transform into something else. It's a culture that has no education. Uh, therefore, education, it is what also uh, our friend Danilo said, quoting the great Edgar Morin, uh, we shouldn't exchange experience with information. We should keep apart. Information is what we know, what we can learn, but it is not how we think. People think they know with information, but they don't think and they don't know. Without experience, there is no thought, there is no creativity, there is no art. Art has to go through experience and the only way to include art into science is to accept that Einstein had the time to play his violin and there is no reason to try to find a relation between the violin of Einstein and his theories. But it is absolutely a reason to imagine that nobody can find the theories of Einstein without having, let's say, another practice, which is absurd, like playing violin. So therefore, I'm saying that uh, going out of the closed worlds of specialization, go back to life, not to society. Life is everywhere. Life is the universe. It's, it's beyond the limits. Art was always beyond the way of going beyond the limits. Art deals with what happens beyond the horizon. The horizon is the point where I know I don't see, is where I come to the point that the visible has a kind of limit. And art starts with the existence of something beyond this limit. Uh, therefore, poetry is the same thing. You have a word in the dictionary and poetry will change this word and transform this word into something else, totally. Because it will push it away from the use of the word. Of the word. So therefore, I'm saying that it is no way to imagine uh, uh, putting together art and science if we understand that artist needs technology and scientists need to illustrate their abstractions. Art is not illustration of ideas. It is nonsense as much as science is nonsense in a different way because it is something we are looking for. Looking in the, the way you look with your eyes and looking the way when you are looking for something, not to something. And therefore, I would say, okay, we have some old friends, they are not anymore with us, like John Dewey, who wrote Art as Experience. There are some major books and some that are part of our history. Uh, perhaps for many people are obsolete because they don't talk about they don't talk about computers or about new technologies, but they prepare the way 
how to master these things. And the only way to master our tools is to know why we need these tools and why what do we need to do with. And that is the education of the future for me. Uh, it's the way I've learned and the way, it's the way I, ta I taught and is the way I keep learning and uh, feel very close to young people without having to negate the problems. Their problems are not mine and my problems are not theirs. But this gap is a fortune, it's not, it's not a problem. A river is a fortune that separates the two sides of Earth. It irrigates. So, okay, we have to, bri to create bridges but on the other side, you have also to accept that without the river, we won't have one side and the other side. And it's not so bad to have two sides. Since we have not two sides anymore, we are divi divided ourselves. Thank you.